Hi everyone, it is Susie and I wanted to do a quick tutorial on the large tea filters that I did. Um, I had a couple of ladies ask if I would um, do a craft with me, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to kind of explain my process though when it comes to my laces and things uh, when I'm shopping for them. Um, these were the uh, five that I made. And um, anyway, this is a really pretty vintage lace here. I cut this actually out of the lace. I'm going to show you that. But anyway, I'm just going to do a quick process kind of on how I how I do the layering and stuff on these uh, tea filters. So um, a lot of this is just really the lace is what makes the makes the layering so um, fun. Now these are the large tea filters that I used. Um, these here I actually bought. I'm looking for my ruler. I don't have it set out with me. Um, these here I actually bought at the antique shop. Someone just had some um, in bundles of them. These measure about um, three and seven eighths by five and a fourth. That's the measurement on these. And you may be able to get those. I know they have the extra large tea bags at Walmart, um, especially in the Red Diamond brand because I have bought those. Uh, also in the Great Value brand, I think they have them as well. I don't know if they're this size or not. I didn't grab one out to to see, but um, anyway, this is just a large a large tea filter. And then uh, the side opens up on these. And when I bought these, the instructions said if that if you will iron uh, this, it will close it. That's what the instructions said. Of course, I want mine for pockets, so it's not a big deal. I'm not going to close it, but. Um, Anyway, I do have, these are just the large tea filters, and I have them in the shop um, still. So, um, anyway, when I am hunting for vintage laces, I look for things like, now this may be very vintage here, that are a close weave, I don't know if you can see that. Um, I like just the uniqueness of this, the way it's been put together. Now these I don't always run across. I happen to be um, some at some little um, antique shop, I believe in um, St. James, Missouri, and I found this. And so I, I bought what they had of that. But when I'm looking for vintage laces, I don't buy every vintage lace I find. I'm looking for certain things when I go. Here's another one like the little flowers. I run across this trim. Um, I, some of these I don't even know where I found them at. I I go so many places uh, to different antique shops. This here is another fun one. I like the way it's weaved. I like the little um, kind of flowers that's in it. I just like how light it is. Um, you know, how thin it is. That's another thing I like. I like the thin trims. I don't know if this one, I don't know that this one is vintage. This, I don't even know where I picked this up at. Uh, this might actually be a Hobby Lobby lace. I don't know. But anyway, I like the weave in it. I like the small, that small kind of way it's been put together. And you can see I've already cut a piece out of that. <sighs> But that's, that's what I'm looking for when I go. I'm looking for things. I love to look for vintage laces that have this um, real loose chain on it like that. I like to look for ones that look like that or maybe have like the stitching like that. Because I will cut that out and use that. Um, just things like this. This is what I look for when I go, when I go, um to the thrift stores or the antique shops looking for vintage laces. This one's another one that I like real well. And then um, things like this. These are what I look for. So I just kind of wanted to show you guys. And then here's another one because what I do with something like this and you can tell I have cut some of these out already. I cut them out and use them just as a like a, uh, a piece, like a medallion or something there. That's what I do with those. I love finding things like this. 
and I cut them apart. This came actually off of a, this was off of a table runner or a doily that had the white cloth in the middle and this was stitched around it and I cut it off. These are gorgeous. I love this. But that's what I'm looking for. Very unique. Uh, this is actually the piece that I cut the um, flower out of and I'm going to cut another one out of. I just came across this piece right here. Um, just this last uh, few weeks. And you can see there's that flower I actually used on that one I cut out of here. But I love the I love the stitching, how far apart and thin this is. So that is another good one. But I just pulled out some of these just so you could kind of see what I, what I'm using when I when I do stuff like this. So there's another piece of a vintage lace. Okay, so that's kind of um what I'm looking for. And my favorite stitch when I'm buying something vintage is I love the fillet stitch. And what I use that for a lot of times is these little pieces that I'm adding here and there. I, I love the um, I love the fillet stitch to use for that particular reason. So anyway, and I always use cheesecloth, and this was a fun find. I found some vintage cheesecloth. It was already discolored from age. I didn't even have to coffee dye it, so that's fun. So anyway, that's kind of what I use. It's kind of what I'm looking for when I go. Oh, when I go and I look for my vintage laces. So, um, those are kind of what makes the best uh, layers for me. And so I, what I've done is I went ahead and uh, just copied off. I copied nine per page on this one to give me the size I need. That's usually what I do. These are just Pinterest images here. I've just used the same one. I just printed out one sheet of... Um, images and so since I have nine of these little girls now I'm just going to use them. So what I'm going to do, I've got some fabrics also I thought that I might even put on a couple of them some of these fabrics. This is a Walmart fabric. I believe that's a Walmart fabric. Oh, I think that might be Joann's. And then these are just a couple of actually vintage laces I picked up at the antique shop. So right there and there. So uh, anyway so that's kind of what I'm going to be working with. I've got my buttons because I do love vintage buttons. These here are the, uh, I believe these they are called the Mother of Pearl. Uh, they are more like a porcelain button. They're not just the plastic or the, they're really porcelain. So um, there's, our, I'm going to be using some of those. And I think that's it. And the tea filter. And then I need one more thing. Um, I've got a piece of scrap here that I just threw it away, so I'm going to kind of take a piece of it. Because what you want is you need a piece of some kind of scrap so that when you are gluing onto this tea filter that you put something kind of behind it so that the glue doesn't um, um, glue your tea bag, tea filter shut, especially if you plan on using it for a uh, pocket. So um, these here, I'm going to all have opening to the right. That's what I like is when they open to the right. But if you're going to put something on a page that you need to open and uh, put in that goes to the left, then just flip it over. But I like mine going to the right. So that's kind of the way that I'm going to be um, putting mine together. So really what I want to start with, I always start with cheesecloth. So I'm just going to grab, get me a pair of scissors here. I thought I had them out too. Okay, these are a little long. These aren't the ones I wanted, but um, anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut, and I don't even worry about it being a, I don't like a straight cut um, when it comes to my cheesecloth. Or my laces. I like them to just have a little character. Now, if they've got a big wad hanging at them, I don't. I mean, I don't like that. But I don't worry about the the way it's um, clipped and things. I don't worry about that. So I just put on my cheesecloth, and usually I try to cover the the whole area mainly. Then I will choose my. Uh, 
my lace and I think I'm actually going to use since there's a lot of kind of the little bit of white in her uh, her uh, thing I think I'm going to use some of this right here and I don't measure I just kind of I just kind of cut now if it's a little long I will go ahead and cut it down but I think I think that's going to be fine. And then I just start layering on top of that. Now I don't glue anything down till I know for sure that it is just how I want it. Then I will start um, uh, gluing it. So here I'm going to use a piece of this. Um, I'm just going to start maybe trying to figure out how I want it layered. Now I know I'm going to use some of this because I really like this particular, um, let's see, I like this particular um, uh, lace right here, this one right here. So I'm just going to try to start kind of layering and then I start messing with and I may cut this down just a little bit more. I'm, I'm thinking I may cut that lace down just a little bit. But then I'll start kind of playing with the buttons. Let's see here. I know that I want something like that. Or maybe I want, hmm, maybe I want one of the, um, let's see if I can find, dig in my, well, oh, let's see here. I just, I just, um, just like this, that might be too big. Yeah, that might be too big for what I want. So I'm going to kind of clip this one apart. Okay, so we have this. And I may, yeah, I may want to just layer that up a little bit like that. And when I do, I'll put a little button. I just need a little one to go center there. And I want this, so I'm going to kind of... Uh... Okay, so that's looking kind of like what I like. So I think I'm going to trim this down just a little bit. I feel like I need to trim this. I'm going to go ahead and put the, um, go ahead and stick my cheesecloth down. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to use the art glitter glue on this one. Um, Fabri-Tac and the art glitter glue is about the only two glues I use anymore. I like the art glitter glue uh, because it does not show that glossy um, look. I think I've said that before in a in maybe a video or two, but and now I'm just kind of moving this around because I don't want um, my glue to stick to anything. Okay, so I'm I'm I didn't overdo the glue because um, when I glue everything else, it will actually seep through that cheesecloth anyway. That cheesecloth, I just kind of want it to be held in place. So I'm going to trim this down a little bit. Make it just a little bit smaller, and I may even angle it a little bit, like so. Yeah, I think I like it kind of going like that. So, I'm going to angle this. I'm, I'm not even going to, I'm going to grab the Fabri-Tac on this. So, let me, uh... Kind of clean my bottle top off and then there's always a right way and a wrong way to these 
to these, uh, I don't think it's going to make any difference on this. Uh, and what I do is, I'm not going to glue it all over, but I'm just going to hit some spots on the uh, little flowers there, or whatever that's supposed to be, petals that's been um, stitched in those you know, to hold it on. That's kind of what I'm going to do. Okay. So I've got that now. I'm going to kind of pat it down. And then I'm going to start working around my photo, which I think I can go ahead and get my photo photo put down. I'm going to get the cheesecloth kind of stuck down a little bit that's curled up. Okay, I think I can go ahead and stick my picture down. I know that's where I'm putting it. I'm usually real generous with the um, Fabri-Tac. I like it to be nice and and glued on. Don't want any chance of it coming up. Okay, I'm just going to kind of put it uh, just kind of where I think I would like it. There's kind of in the middle. A little. I brought it to the top a little more than the bottom. Because I'm going to put this here, and I kind of want it to set on the on the corner of it. I know that I'm going to have um, these little pieces kind of right to the side. I like the layered look of that. And then this, I think I'm just going to string at the top. And let's see, I think I'm going to start figuring out where I want my buttons. I wanted that little button. Uh, maybe I want this one that's got this string in it. Yeah, I think that's the one I want right there. And then I just start maybe putting buttons to to suit myself kind of where I think they look good. So maybe have a, um, I think that would be all the buttons I need. And so what I maybe want to do is I have another little, a little one of these that I can cut out of this. This is a little bit of tatting, it looks like. And I think I'm going to just kind of do it like so. And so there's really my layered tag. Um, pretty, pretty simple there. And if I want something to kind of, which I don't think I need anything over there. Sometimes less is more. Um, I think I think I'm just going to leave that kind of the way it is. I don't. I'm trying to think, maybe do I want to? No, I think that's just got to go there. I think that's just the way I like it. So anyway, I'm going to start. Um, I am going to start gluing this down, and this will be my first tag. That's what this will be. So I'm just going to kind of put it there. And just start to... Now, I don't smear glue all over this. I just barely get it on there. It will hold, because I don't want a lot of glue showing when uh, I have it stitch, uh, put down, I don't like a lot of that glue showing. And it definitely will hold. It, it doesn't have a problem holding. So we're just going to kind of get that on there. Okay, and then I'm going to glue this one down. And again, I'm just gluing on the big, the big, um, stitch in there and I'm just going to catch a little little pieces here and there so all that glue will not sh be shining shining through there so we're going to kind of just lay it and I want it to be on the picture I want it to kind of hang on that picture that's what I like it to do okay and if in like this I can feel it kind of coming up what I'll do is I'll just seep a little glue under there to hold that, hold this part down there. Okay. 
and then I'll want this to be stuck right here because I want it to lay on that picture and I want it to pretty basically stay there same way here I'll just put a little glue there to hold that all right and then I wanted this which I am going to cut off a little of that where that thread's been tied and I'm going to go ahead and get me a little glue on there put it on the center Oops, so you know what? I think I put that on backwards because right there's where that's been tied off, which I think I can still do. I didn't pay attention to that when I put that on. So, okay, so I want to just put that back. All right, and then I'm ready to glue my buttons and this flower. So I'm just going to catch this. And all I'm really going to do, I think, is basically glue the center of that, not the rest of the flower, because I want it to kind of be able to just be a little loose there. I don't want it to look like it's all um, glued down. Okay, and then I'm going to put a little glue right here in the center, and that's where I'm going to put this little button. And I want those threads to be a little tight, so I'm going to kind of pull them. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to even leave the little threads hang out there. I don't know if you can see that, but I left those little threads. There was a couple little threads there that I pulled. I'm just going to leave them out. I think that looks kind of neat. Okay, and then I'm going to... Just put my little buttons here. I think I was only going to use these three little buttons. And so uh, I will get them glued down. Okay. And I'm going to use that one there. Which I could have probably used another big button. Let's see what that would have looked like. Yeah, I think I'll use another button like that. Let's see. Do I have another one? Basically that size. Yeah, that is. Okay. So I'm just going to get that glue there and put it right there. And so there is one. And just kind of move your, your little um, piece of card stock or whatever you're going to use and make sure that nothing's getting stuck to it as you glue everything down. Okay guys and there is one so I'm going to let this dry a minute and then we'll work on another one and I'll be able to pull this um, pull this out so okay okay so I have got this it has dried and I have pulled my little my little piece of uh, that's actually a manila folder and there it is. I really like how that is. I love the layers on that. I love how the um, the uh, pieces look together. So there is that one. This one here I wanted to, I've already got a little piece of cheesecloth there I'm going to cut down. But I think I'm going to use another piece of this. I'm going to once again cut the flower out is what I'm going to do and use that flower. And then the other two that I make, I'm actually going to use, um, I want to use fabric uh, as the backdrop or the background, so, instead of this vintage lace. Okay, so there is my flower that I have got. I'm going to cut it out. And uh, I, I just, oops, I cut a little bit of the petal off when wanting to do that, but... That's okay. I am going to cut that petal off, though. And I just kind of cut around it. I don't get real precise as far as kitting all the little, um, um, the knobby pieces off there. Okay. And so there is going to be my little, my little flower. 
right there. There's the flower. So I'm going to put that on that one just like I did the one, the other one. And I, I save all these little pieces like this. Um, I don't throw any, even that, I don't throw those away because those are what I actually lay on the um, photos. When I want that draping over a photo, that's what I use. So, Okay. Get that stuck in that glue. Okay, so I want to cut this cheesecloth down. I just uh, kind of whacked off a little piece there while it was sticking out of my little uh, tray there. Oops, I've got glue on my hand so everything's going to stick. Cut that down a little bit. So, okay. Get a a wipe here and see if I can't get a little bit of glue off of my hands so those won't be sticking to me. Okay. So, I think I'm going to have to go this way to get it to lay down a little better. And I think that'll be good right there. So, let me see if I can get a little glue off my hands here. That's what I'm working at. So everything won't be sticking to me quite so bad. All right. Okay, so there is that. So I'm going to do like I did before. I'm just going to, I've got my piece of manila cardstock under there. And I'm just going to spread a little glitter glue, just enough to hold my cheesecloth there. And I'm going to go ahead and lay it down. I'm not going to start building on it first. I'm, I'm just going to lay it down and go ahead and just work from it from there. And probably cut. And I want to glue that down. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. And I can see I ain't got my cardboard down there. A little bit of that that's hanging over. Okay, so that's pretty much where I'm going with that. Okay, I'm going to get my photo. Okay, I know that I'm probably going to put some of this. This is probably going to somehow work its way like so. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut that off, and I'm probably going to slice one of them leaves off of there. Okay, so it's going to look a little like that. And I may even want that overlaid on the photo. Maybe not. Maybe not. All right, so I think it's going to look like that is what I think. I like that. Okay. Then I want to, let's see, I know that I'm going to have this come up like so because I, I like that little flower right there. I will probably end up putting a little bit of this to lay on the and these little pieces will go kind of on here somewhere just to layer. I may put it down there. I may have another one kind of kind of up here somewhere. This leaf needs to go get it shaped up like a leaf here. Let's see. Let's see. What I'll probably do is kind of put it something like that. And I know that I'm going to need my buttons. So, let's see. 
I know I want I know that I want a button somehow to go with that leaf right there. Let's see. It may have to be a bigger button. Let's see, I don't think that one's the port. I don't know if that one's porcelain or not. I can't tell by the feel of it. So there is that and that. There is my little flower. Mm. And maybe I want a little button somehow. Uh, I don't want too big, but I don't want too small. Nope. I may want the... It always takes me a little bit to figure to figure out just exactly where I want that. Not liking that at all. So I tell you, I'm gonna I'm gonna mess with this just a little bit off camera because I may be 30 minutes trying to figure out exactly how I want it. I'm gonna kind of use the same things. I'm just gonna try to rearrange it a little bit. Okay, so I've kind of got it laid out, and I decided to um, leave the flower off. Although it might not look too bad there, but I just think it's a little too much for the for the collage. So I've decided to leave the flower off and I will use it on another another project. I think I am pretty much going to go with this and have that leaf and the cheesecloth kind of here on the on the end. So, and I've just added another piece of this. So, I think that's where I'm going with this. So, I know that I don't want this to move much, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, kind of get this intact right here. I know that I want to do that or it will come apart, so I want to kind of get that set on there like so. Oops. I think I can still salvage that. Okay. Alright. Okay, there will be that. Alright, and then I'll start sticking this down. So, I'm going to move that out. Move that out. Move that off. Move that off and go ahead and go ahead and stick my picture down. Okay. So go ahead and get that kind of right there and then I'm going to go ahead and start sticking this down just kind of pat that down and I think I'm going to use the art glitter to go on the photo because I don't want the glossiness of the of the Fabri-Tac to be showing. And when I'm having to stick that many pieces down on there, I don't want the the Fabri-Tac to be glossy. This will kind of dry clear. So. Okay. All right. So there is that. Now I am going to use Fabri Tac on this here because it's just I can put it on this big piece right there. This I want right here. Okay. And then I want. Let's see this. 
big piece I want right here. That right there. So, alright. I'm going to go ahead and use a little, a little Fabri Tech on that. Just a real fine bead up this little, what I'd call a spine. Okay. And then I will stick this down just a little with a little glitter glue there. Okay. Alright, so there is kind of that. Alright, and then this was going to go just like that. And I better move my paper around a little bit, make sure nothing's getting getting too stuck there. Okay. I'm going to use Fabri-Tac for this, definitely. Okay, that needs to kind of pop like that. A little glue on the back of that cheesecloth. You do want the cheesecloth to hold though, and otherwise it'll just kind of fray apart. Okay. Make sure you got that paper behind it. All right. So I'm liking that. That really came out pretty. I like that. Okay. So. I'm going to add a little more glue on these little prongs here. Okay. So they'll kind of stick down. Alright. Then really the only thing I had left was this to go maybe up there. Gonna kind of put it on the on the stitching part there. Your okay, and we're gonna just kind of glue that down. All right, so I like that. I like that a lot. Now I just need to start working the buttons in where I'm gonna want a button, possibly there, and then I need a little a little something there, just a little, a little button there. Okay, I, I like this. I like the way that looks, so I'm going to stick those down and this one will be done. I'll add a little glue to my thing, it looks like. Okay, so I'm going to, going to put that there. And then uh, put that there. All right, and I'm gonna I do have to get that stuck down a little. All right, so that's that's everything on this one. Okay, and I'm going to let this dry and make sure nothing gets stuck to my to my uh, back side of my tea filter there. So we're going to let this dry, and then I'm going to do another one using fabric as a as a background. So, all right, I'll be back in just a few. Okay, so the other one has dried, and I set it back here, but. Anyway, there it is, and I really like that. So, there.